Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video, although I am going to be discussing the main theme of Starmer's questions and PMQs, because I'd already planned to talk about this very topic linked to a poll which thousands of you very kindly filled in for me. I'm going to discuss the general theme rather than cover the specific questions and answers. It relates to scandals. But I am just going to have to point out that when this video goes out, if it goes out at all, it may be that Rishi Sunak is or is about to call the general election. All sorts of hubbub about a cabinet meeting at quarter past four, which will be in the past when you're watching this, but is in the future from the point I'm recording it. And David Cameron pulled back to the country and down his street, not answering questions. And it's all raising the stakes that we are going to get this general election announcement. He has... No respect for my schedule. I've said this before. So we may have to have an emergency live stream or we may not. We will see. But anyway, I'd already planned to do this video and I'm not going to do it twice just because Starmer copied my homework and I'm not going to put it off just because Rishi Sunak is throwing my schedule into the shredder. But anyway, if you want to know how the Q&A between Starmer and Sunak went, here is the summary. Starmer referenced the infected blood scandal and said, shouldn't government be more transparent and candid? Sunak said, yeah, we probably should. Starmer asked, so are you going to make your government more transparent and candid? And Sunak replied, uh, maybe I'll get back to you. In fact, by far and away, the best bit of PMQs today was a Conservative MP asking Rishi Sunak if his constituency could get one of those new hospitals that his party promised in the manifesto. And Sunak told him pretty much that he already had everything he's going to get. I had a little chuckle about that one. Uh, can we have one of these new hospitals, Prime Minister? No, they don't exist. But let's get on to the subject of scandals in general. So Starmer's point today, my point, is that we have too many of these scandals. In fact, it's everyone's point. Everyone's in agreement. We have too many of these scandals and they always end up in cover-ups. In the case of the infected blood scandal, for decades. I asked people in the poll what they thought was the biggest current scandal. Interesting that people put the COVID VIP lane. Now, I wonder if that's because the source is more recent or because it is directly linked to the current government. Because many other scandals originate elsewhere and then the government makes it worse by suppressing it or covering it up, not blowing the lid on it when ministers actually do find out. So the first thing to note is sort of how I'm approaching this idea of what is a current scandal. So first of all, current would mean that the government have not actually properly dealt with it yet. Although when it comes to the infected blood scandal, it does sound like there is now movement. Although if Sunak calls the general election uh, today, he's basically saying to Keir Starmer, yeah, you can sort that out. Thank you very much. Because uh, all we've really heard so far is another phase being announced. And for it to qualify as a scandal, I think it has to be something that the public are very aware of and outraged at. And it can no longer be denied by the government. Until that happens, it's not. it should be a scandal, but it isn't quite. So I say that because in the comments, oh, there were hundreds of comments as well as thousands of votes, uh, there were lots of alternatives posted to the four. I could only give four options, sorry. Uh, I mean, you've got Hillsborough, Birmingham Six, Bloody Sunday, Windrush, Russia Report, Cash for Honours, Brexit, the way the government dealt with care homes during the pandemic, water companies. Oh my goodness, the list goes on. The list of potential contenders is huge but I only had room for four in my poll. And some of those listers either didn't affect as many people, so just automatically it wouldn't be as big a scandal. Um, they're all either properly out in the open now, so not technically a current scandal anymore. No further government action really expected. Or they're just not out in the open yet. We know about them, but not enough of the public are aware or outraged enough. Like Brexit and the care homes during COVID, for example, don't yet qualify as a scandal for me because there's not enough of the public who realise what's really happened. So the level of outrage isn't there yet. Um, it will only be a scandal when the extent of the issues can no longer be denied, at least by the media. But what I would say is this. Many of the biggest scandals we could list are not actually the fault of the government at the time. Others are. I'll get onto that. But but quite a lot of them are not, like the infected blood scandal. Not ultimately the fault of the government in, in inception, the, the Horizon Post Office scandal. And yet, when government ministers do become aware, their instinct is to cover it up. Why? Because dealing with it inevitably means 
costs. Like the infected blood scandal compensation scheme is believed to cost £10 billion once fully implemented according to reports. Now, the government have said this money can come from borrowing, which is interesting in itself. Oh, so we, can bor we can't borrow for investment where the return would pay for the servicing of the debt. That's bad. But borrowing to just put to bed another scandal is not because Jeremy Hunt wants to offer more tax cuts or hint at them. Although if they do call the election today, that won't be happening. But anyway, the point is it's expensive. It shouldn't have been this government that dealt with it, because that's another thing. By the time these things come around, it's usually a previous government that's been hiding things. And then that government feels aggrieved because it needs the money for other things. Nobody in the current government has any responsible for this scandal, other than like their predecessors. They dragged their feet because they looked at the bill and went, yeah, we'd rather put this off. You know, the first government to become aware of the infected blood scandal was that of Margaret Thatcher, who basically said, yeah, Sodom. The last Labour government did take some action, set up a compensation fund to address part of the problem, but even they dragged their feet, hence why it's still going on now. Nobody comes out of this with any credit. But the question is, how do we stop it happening again in the future? Because with this particular scandal, you are talking decades of very different governments, two completely different parties, interchangeable as well. And really, there are two weaknesses in the system, as far as we can tell, right? The first is those in the organisation, the offending organisation, in this case, the NHS has been the post office. It could be other things. Long before these scandals come out, there are innocent people who will know about them within that organisation. It's not their fault, but they are not blowing the whistle. That is because whistleblowers are punished in this country. Not literally punished, but they will lose their jobs and they won't work in the industry again. Now, when I discuss this with you know, Graham Hughes, we'll be very quick to point out in America, if a whistleblower provides evidence which leads to a successful class action, they get a cut of the payout. Well, that's worthwhile with a big scandal. So maybe we could do something like that, a financial inducement for people to blow the whistle. But what about politicians who cover it up? So it's got to a certain stage, ministers are now aware. It's been suggested that there are politicians who should be facing legal action regarding the infected blood scandal. And not just random loudmouths on the internet. It's all easy for us. Oh, you should all go to jail. A former Supreme Court justice. But were they saying that some politicians may actually be criminally responsible or just that they should be? I wasn't clear about that. What is clear to me is that many of these skin scandals cause way more damage, affect way more people because ministers cover things up even when they're alerted. Like, I appreciate that when suspicions are first raised, ministers essentially have to decide who they believe and they can get that decision wrong. I get that. I don't blame them for that. But once they know there's something wrong and they cover it up, either just by not launching a proper investigation when they should or by literally covering it up, that does us a disservice. And it always comes out and it always costs more lives, more relationships, more money. So we really need to fundamentally change the system. There's no point in ministers just agreeing not to cover things up. First of all, we have to accept that because these things keep happening with different governments, with different ministers, all very different people, we have to accept there's something wrong with the system. You know, we need to empower whistleblowers so that these things are stopped before they even get serious. Secondly, we need to make sure that ministers are held criminally responsible for deliberately covering it up. The truth always comes out anyway. It's just the nature of politics that as long as you can keep a lid on it for a few years until, you know, you know that in probably in 10 years time, you're not going to be in office, then it's someone else's mess to deal with. So you benefit if you can keep a lid on it while you are in office. So we need to change that because even if we did get a government who believed in transparency for once and you can't rule it out, it could happen it would eventually be replaced by one that did not. It's like with so many other things that go wrong with this country. We need to stop coming up with systems that work on the principle of the good chap theory of governance, right? Work on the assumption that all politicians and all executives are bastards. They're not, but if we work on the principle that they are, the good ones won't even notice the systems we put in place because they're already in alignment with it. And the actual bastards will be hamstrung from the start. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.